to the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast YouTube channel. I'm your host, Matt Cardona, a.k.a. the Thousand Dollar Broski, a.k.a. the Michael Jordan of Wrestling Figure Collecting. And today, finally, we're going to take a tour of my toy room. Let's go. I wasn't kidding about that Scott Hall walk. It's the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. Time to stop the show. Talking figs and collectibles, here we are, let's go! Cardone is here to buy everything, bare minimum, Brian is thinking what to say, Smart Mark is ready to f*** the show! It's time to talk, let's go! Alright, first up is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle section. Uh, if you grew up in the late 80s, early 90s, you were a huge Turtles fan, I certainly was, and down here are my Playmates Turtles now. These aren't my original ones from childhood. Those are all like beat up and destroyed and missing accessories. No, these are fresh mint on card figures that I let breathe, I ripped open, even the sewer. I put those stickers on myself and there's no better feeling than putting fresh stickers on a brand new sewer. Uh, and then we have a little miscellaneous shelf. We have some NECA stuff, some Super 7 stuff, we even have the WWE crossover stuff. And then Ghostbusters, Ninja Turtles, pretty damn cool, but up here, the NECA Turtles. The NECA, oh man, I, I, I'm speechless just looking at them. These are the best turtle figures ever. I mean, it looks like the figures uh, are from the movie. Like they just jumped out of the screen into this display case. Uh, they have the cartoon turtles, the movie, the super shredder, and then who could forget these giant ones up here. I think these are the ones that when you walk into this room, you see those. And whether you're a toy collector or not, you know those are awesome. This isn't all of my Turtles collection. You'll hear that uh, throughout this whole video. Uh, most of my stuff is in this room, but there's some stuff that there's just no room for. So my garage is like a storage unit. But this, this is uh, uh, the greatest hits of my Turtle collection. Ghostbusters is one of, if not my favorite movies ever since I was a little kid. And then when I grew up, I appreciated it on a whole nother level. But there were no movie figures when I was a little kid, just the real Ghostbusters, the, you know, the original Kenner, which I have down here. Um, I have the Kenner ones, and then I have the Diamond Select, where it's supposed to be like the real Ghostbusters. I mean, it is, it's supposed to be like the Kenner. Uh, the Firehouse, such a classic toy. Uh, one of my favorites, and just like the sewer, I bought that in the box. I put the stickers on because my childhood ones were destroyed, but there wasn't really good figures for Ghostbusters for so many years, so if you look, a lot of weird like miscellaneous stuff, and now over the years, like 30 years later, this is when we're finally getting all the merch. I mean, it's great for my collection, it sucks for my wallet, but there's so many cool movie figures, like up here we have the, the Diamond Select. Uh, before that, there were some Mattel figures, and now even down here, like the Hasbros. Ghostbusters is one of my favorite things, and look at this Proton Pack. This is like the original one uh, from the 80s, again. I, I'm gonna keep saying this. Not my original one, but the original one. All original stickers. And look at this trap down here. It actually works. There's a ghost in here. There really is, I swear. Um, it's the ghost of all my money, because I have none, because I bought all these damn toys. All right, so this is my miscellaneous section. Uh, this is actually the most dangerous section in the room, because this is what happens, uh, you know, this is what you see when you first walk in. Uh, for instance, once Otis came in here, and with his belly, hit this and knocked over all the Terminator figures. So it's very, uh, very, very dangerous over here. I got my T-Rex down there, kind of blocking the door uh, from hitting everything. But yeah, there's a bunch of different stuff here. Some more real Ghostbusters, uh, Stranger Things, an Arnold, uh, Rocky, uh, Back to the Future. Down here we have some Jurassic Park, so much random stuff. And then I got this basketball because on the back of the door, listen, I am the Michael Jordan of wrestling figure collecting. So I got my Space Jam uh, little hoop and I would dunk it, but then, like I said, I'd probably knock all this over and uh, that would be a disaster. All right, so over here, I have all my, my lightsabers. Um, why do I have a bunch of lightsabers? That's a good question, I don't know. But anyway, this is where all my classic superstars, uh, my really, really rare ones are. 
Uh, I have every single Jax Classic Superstar. Jeremy, uh, if you're watching, thank you for making these figures. I love them, but I just don't, is someone saying hello here? Is a cat trying to say hello? The door just came open. Anything that happened here on the Major Wrestling Fair Podcast. But uh, I have all the figures, I just don't have the real estate to display them. They're all downstairs in the garage, in Ziplocs, toted up. But these are the super crazy ones. Like, here we go, a one of 100 Hogan. Uh, a one of 20 Sergeant Slaughter, the super rare Ultimate Warrior variants. So there's a lot of money right behind me right now. All right, this section is a little weird because up top we have the Monster Squad, uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, but there's no merch. This is kind of like bootleg merch, but I love it so much. And then it doesn't really blend into the Disney section, but it does in my room because this is the Disney section and you can't have a toy room without toy story figures am i right i mean at least that's what i told myself and this is a weird mishmash of all disney stuff because they're never going to stop making disney world merch or disney merch or disneyland merch so i gotta like put the brakes be very specific i got a lot of mcdonald's toys um now these glass or ceramic figures they're not even technically toys so why are they in here i don't know um, I collected them when I was a kid. I asked my mom to send me like the Fab Five, which is uh, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, Minnie, and Pluto. That's all I wanted from my childhood. But then she sent the other ones. And then she kept going on eBay and finding more than I ever had. So now I have like four shelves worth. Uh, thanks, mom. But hey, look, look at the real estate that it takes up. So it's a lot of stuff. So this is a Disney shelf. Um, I love Disney, um, but it's very hard to walk into Disney World and not leave with something because every time you go there, there's new merch. So like I said, I need to be very, very specific. But my favorite piece of merch are like these Disney character statues back here. Uh, I found them on eBay and it took a long time to put the set together because on the back of the box, it doesn't say like what year they were made or what these are called. So try typing uh, Mickey Mouse Disney World into eBay and see how many damn results you get. You get a lot. All right, I admit, I didn't grow up liking Star Wars, but it's not my fault. I was born in 1985, but the special editions in the mid 90s, that was my first, uh, my first like, uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? My first, help me out cameraman, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? My first introduction to Star Wars. Uh, so these Power of the Force figures right here are those figures. Now, um, you can go to any vintage toy store in America and I guarantee there will be Power of the Force figures because they're worth nothing. They're worth nothing because people thought they were going to be worth all this money because these were. These are the OG, the original trilogy figures from the 70s and 80s. Like I said, I didn't grow up watching those movies. I didn't grow up playing with these figures. But years later, I had to get these. You can't be a Star Wars fan and a Star Wars collector without having the originals. So people, you know, at the time, they didn't think these were gonna be worth money. So people who kept them in the box, they were able to make so much money. So people thought, okay, I'll do that with these Power of the Force. Uh-uh, didn't happen, they're worthless. But now with Hasbro, I have the Black Series. They're, they're more articulation, the six inch, so much detail. I mean, look, I have, a, I have a Black Series figure just right here. Like every day I'm getting new figures. Where am I gonna put this? There is no room to put this anywhere. So do I put it, uh, you know, do I let it breathe? Do I open them up? Or do I keep them in on card and hang it up with those? I don't know, that, that is the problem that I have. What do I do with all these damn figures? And I forgot one more thing. This is a closet. This is a closet. I had to literally rip the closet doors off because I ran out of room in this toy room. This is supposed to have like sliding doors. There's supposed to be like suits in here, uh, clothes. But no, I have Star Wars figures and I love it. All right, it's because of this section that they call me the Michael Jordan of wrestling figure collecting. This is my favorite section right here. Uh, a lot of stuff in this room, it's worthless. I couldn't even give it away or it's, you know, retail price if that, uh, but some of this stuff in here is one of one, one of a kind, crazy, crazy rare stuff. Uh, down here, we start with the LJNs. Um, I love the Bendy figures down here, but the LJN line were my first ever figures. Those were the figures I grew up on. Uh, I would chew on the fingers, I would bash them against each other, the paint was all destroyed, so of course I had to rebuy them, but those are my, you know, my favorites until we get to the Hasbros. The Hasbros are, I think they're everybody's favorite figures, right? They're so nostalgic. If you grew up in the early 90s, you had at least one Hasbro. You had a Warrior Hasbro, you had a Hogan Hasbro. So they're my favorite, but then when we get to this, this top shelf, this is 
the top shelf, literally top shelf, of some of the rarest pieces uh, of all time. We have Greg the Hammer Valentine. Let me explain this to you. All right. Let's find the date on this, baby. March 1991, you get that WWF magazine, you flip open the cover, and you see this Toys R Us ad. Bring home the superstars, all the new tag teams, right? You see the Rockers, you see Demolition, you see the Bushwhackers, and you see Rhythm and Blues. But when you go to the store, there are no Rhythm and Blues. Greg the Hammer Valentine Rhythm and Blues never came out. He's right there. There it is, that is the Greg the Hammer Valentine from this ad, and then I have the two ups behind. Uh, what is a two-up? A two-up is, it's not made to, uh, to be sold. It's not made to be in the hands of a collector. Uh, back in the day, two-ups were made to get the, the paint applications down, to get all the detailing down, and then they would scale it down. So these two-ups are meant to be destroyed. I have Hogan, Warrior, Macho King, Greg, and Tugboat, and Tugboat is another figure that never came out. So up here is some crazy, crazy stuff. We have the Moonbelly Kamala. Uh, we have a Brutus Beefcake, never came out. We have the drawing for Diesel, the unreleased Diesel, Diesel's head, all the mail aways back there. The JC Penny ring with Macho Man, the Green Trunks Macho Man, uh, the orange car joint the class, so much cool stuff. Uh, I, I, I'm just like, wow, I'm just lost looking at it because this is, this is it. I mean, this is why I'm the MJ. Uh, wow. Uh, and up top, we have the Mattel Retros, which are, you know, supposed to be like the Hasbro figures, and it's super cool that Mattel made me, so I have my own retro, so really I can have these dream matches of, you know, uh, me against Rhythm and Blues Greg, uh, or me against LOD, or me against Andre the Giant, so that's super, super cool. And then at the tippy top, we have the Star Toys figures from Spain. Some of these, I think, might be bootlegs or customs, but I couldn't take the chance just in case they were real because there's like little to no information about these. So I had to get them just in case. And they look pretty damn cool anyway. And this shelf down here is some random LJN stuff. Uh, the stretch wrestlers, um, the, the, the big Hogan and Piper. But a lot of this stuff is unreleased stuff. Uh, uh, mean Gene in an alternate pose. We have the uh, Sergeant Slaughter never came out. We have the Sergeant Slaughter mail away. We have articulated versions of LJN figures. Iron Sheik, Hogan and Bundy that never came out. Uh, hand painted prototypes of, of Macho Man, of George Animal Steel. Uh, and I love this, this Hogan back here. Uh, I just got this. Let me, let me take it out. Oh, should I do it? Let's do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Um, oh baby. I just got this figure. These were supposed to come out. You squeeze the leg and the arms kind of go up. I don't want to squeeze too hard and break this thing, but uh, this is pretty damn expensive. And I'm not gonna disclose how much, but this will literally be the centerpiece of my LJN collection. Right there, Terry. Right there, Hulkster. Don't fall over, thank you very much. And this is just a random ass section of wrestling stuff. Up top, we have some random Jack stuff. Uh, right here is the Series 1 Bone Cruncher Razor Ramon prototype. Bone Crunchers, I love them. I have every single Bone Cruncher, but I don't have any of them in this room. Uh, I really need to build like a setup right here in the middle of all the Bone Crunchers. Uh, they're some of my favorite figures ever. Uh, that's when I took my Fig Fed the most seriously and, you know, uh, had the title histories and played the entrance music, but I just don't have room for all of them. Uh, so I gotta figure something out. Uh, here we have the Titan Trons. I love the Titan Tron figures. Uh, we have some AWA Remcos. We have some uh, Bendoms. We have some ECW. We have some Japanese figures, some random figures. It's just a whole random section, but uh, they deserve to be in here. When Jax lost the WWE license in 2009, I was brokenhearted. Uh, I sold off all my classic superstars. I sold off all my ruthless aggression figures. Uh, don't worry, I rebought them all. Uh, they're in the garage and Ziploc, I have them. But uh, I was hesitant to start Mattel's because I didn't want to get into a new relationship. You know, my heart was broken. So it took me a while to uh, open up to them and then uh, I finally went all in. Uh, I have a special rule though, I have a cutoff. 2007 is my cutoff. That's when I made my WWE debut. So it's fine for me to get guys that I grew up watching. To get guys now, like nothing against anybody currently, I just don't want to get figures with them, if that makes sense. And also, this way, there's at least like uh, an end point, you know what I'm saying? So for instance, if there's an Undertaker that comes out in you know 2020 and it depicts a 1991 Undertaker, 
I have to get it. But if there's an Undertaker that comes out in 2020 and it depicts a 2020 Undertaker, I don't need it. Sorry, dead man. But here are all my uh, Mattels. Um, there's Elites in here, Basics, uh, Ultimates. I really do believe that Mattel makes the best product uh, ever. And that's why I get so much real estate. I try to make cuts every once in a while because like how many Shawn Michaels do I really need? But there's so many good ones. Um, and some of my favorite ones are, are down here. Uh, it's Sting, Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man, and Zack Ryder. Um, I kind of stole, uh, you know, the looks from Macho Man, Sting, and Warrior, and I put them together to form, uh, you know, my ring attire, hoping that Mattel would make a figure, and they did. So thank you very much, Bill. Uh, I have all those four figures there. And then another special one is uh, Razor Ramon from WrestleMania 10. Uh, Zack Ryder from when uh, he or I won the Intercontinental title. And then Steve Austin from that WrestleMania who just uh, congratulated me backstage. I think it's a cool thing to have in figure form. Um, and then down here, we have some WCW stuff. Uh, it, it's not getting enough love down here. I need to, I need a bigger house, right? I just need a bigger house, a whole floor. Uh, maybe we have a WCW room, right? But down here we have the Galoops the San Francisco Toy Makers, uh, the Toy Biz, so much cool stuff in here. And a lot of this stuff is super rare, like down here, PN News, Diamond Stud, Ricky Morton, uh, prototypes, never released. Um, you know, I, I love this Nitro Arena. It was super cool back in the day to, you know, have your fig fit, have the Nitro Arena. Um, it was like recreating the Monday Night Wars on your bedroom floor. And here are my Funkos. Uh, talk about an addiction. These Funko Pops are an addiction. I found these online years ago because I was searching for Ghostbuster figures. And I'm like, ooh, what are these pop Ghostbuster figures? And then I'm like, oh, they make Star Wars? Oh, they make Disney? Oh, they make WWE? Oh, they eventually make everything that I like? Uh, so it's it's a problem, I realize that. You can't even see like who are behind certain characters. There's so many figures, absolutely, uh, completely maxed out when it comes to real estate. But I love that in the same scale, in the same universe, you could have Slimer, you can have uh, Marty McFly, you can have Zack Morris, you can have Zack Ryder, uh, all the Disney characters, Star Wars, so many cool things. And, and I always make cuts. I always have to make cuts because I need more room. But the figures are just so damn great. And it, it's, uh, it's great to have like a Rocky Balboa in the same universe as Winnie the Pooh, which is super cool, super unique. And that's why I think so many people love these Funkos. Growing up, one of my favorite toys um, were these wrestling buddies. These wrestling buddies were some of my favorite toys growing up. You could wrestle them. Uh, I wasn't this small, but I was, wasn't much bigger at the time when I was five years old. So it was super cool to, you know, have tag team matches with your brother against Hogan and the Warrior, or just practice moves on these guys uh, when I got older on my trampoline. But through the years, so many companies tried to replicate the buddies, but nobody ever really did it right until now. The Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, buddies. The Major Buddies. You can get Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, and by the time this video comes out, they're probably already sold out. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the tour of my toy room. Uh, I'm sure next year we can do another video. Hopefully I have a bigger room. Uh, if not, I'll just have this room with way more stuff. So guys, keep scratching that figure itch. See you later.